Greetings everyone, happy holidays and welcome back to the channel. Today for my special Christmas video we're going to do a special project. What we have here in front of us is my grandparents old Sony TCK 45. This is the cassette deck they had for pretty much all the 80s and into the 90s. And yeah, it means a lot to me to be able to get this one going again. I really want this one to be perfect, so... This isn't just going to be me fixing stuff on it. This is going to be me completely restoring it. Which will pretty much amount to just being electrical restoration, because as you can see, it's pretty much perfect as it is, cosmetically. It doesn't really need much to come back to looking like it's brand new again. But yeah... We're going to go through it and service the transport, and I'm also going to replace every single electrolytic capacitor, whether it needs it or not. And um, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm betting that most of the, if not all of the capacitors are still good in this unit. It's just, I want it to be perfect for another four, 30 to 40 years, so. Yeah, this model was available, I think, in 79 and 80 only along with a bunch of other units, which I am slowly building up my collection to. But uh, yeah, you could get it with either a digital uh, VU meter like this, or with an analog style VU meters, kind of like this uh, 55 over here. That's pretty much what the VU meters look like on the uh, analog version of this deck. So yeah. 1979, 1980, and uh, as far as I know, my uncle bought this for my grandparents pretty much when it was brand new, so yeah, I don't know if they, if my uncle used this before giving it to my grandparents, but uh, that's neither here nor there. I'm going to get it all fixed up and hopefully working perfectly so it can stay in the family and entertain generations to come. We'll see how that works out anyway. Now, we're going to have to get into this and see exactly what kind of condition it's in because uh, it doesn't play anymore. I've mentioned that in a couple of videos, but uh, last time I tried to, to use this thing for anything, it, did just, it just didn't do anything. And uh, when I inherited this from my uncle, maybe, oh, 15 to 20 years ago, I did go through it and rebuilt it at that time, but I suspect I got the job done wrong because the auto stop has and auto play has never worked on this since. So yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that working as well. Now, when it comes to recapping, we'll get into this and look at the insides in a second here. When it comes to recapping, I've got all the parts right here in that box. Some of them are going to be shared with the modification job I'm doing on the carver, but that's for a future video. I've got the schematics printed here. All right, sorry about that. Had to get the phone straightened out. Anyway, I've got the schematics here, and I've got the uh, parts list here for all the capacitors. And uh, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show the recapping job on camera because there's just too much. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each capacitor I'm going to test with the ESR meter. And I'm going to mark it on here in red, which ones are bad. But uh, there's there's more to it than that we're going to have to deal with here. I've got a moth fluttering around here in the middle of December for some reason. Anyhow, these are the schematics. There's a lot to go through here, so... Yeah... I got my work cut out for me, but uh, when it comes to the audio section, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to install matched sets of capacitors in certain areas that are in the audio chain. And uh, this is basically the audio section right here. Every capacitor in here, like this up here is the left channel. Every capacitor from up here, I'm going to have to find a matched one for the right channel, which is down here. And Sony has chosen not to reprint the schematics for this channel down here because it's essentially the same as up here, so. Yeah, see, like this one up here, C106, 
2.2 at 50 volts. We're going to have to find two that measure exactly identical or as close to it as possible. And then we'll do 106 and 206 because it's ones and twos to start with that differentiate the channels. You've got C106 for left channel and C206 for right channel. So that's what's going to happen there. But uh, yeah, like I said, I'm doing all of this off camera because it's going to be a long, long process to do all that. Obviously, when it comes to the stuff like the power supply, which is down here, we don't have to worry about uh, matching capacitor pairs. But uh, yeah, anything in the audio chain, I want to make sure is a matched pair because obviously it's going to have to record. And uh, yeah, so that's the plan for the capacitors. But uh, for now, we need to get inside the deck itself and just see what we've got working with us here. All right, so the bottom cover is off, the access panel to get at the electronics, and the top cover is off. And I already see problems. This belt's come off. And uh, it's worse than that, this belt is not routed properly. I screwed up when I did this belt because this is the shutoff belt. It's supposed to go around this pulley and uh, see if I can zoom you in here. And over this pulley and then wrap around the motor pulley over there. And uh, yeah, I didn't have access to service documentation when I did this originally, so there's this little groove on this uh, flywheel down in there that makes it look like there's supposed to be a belt around it, but uh, no. So yeah, that's the wrong belt. It's never been the right belt, so this is why it won't run now, even though the, the capstan belt is apparently still there. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get a new capstan belt in here as well, because why not? So yeah, we can see that there are some capacitors to deal with on this motor board as well. I'll get to those by and by. I think I've got every capacitor this deck needs everywhere, so yeah. Like I said, we'll get to the transport by and by. But uh, for now, what I want to do is I want to flip this over. And we'll take a look at the electronics. How nice was it for Sony to give me an access panel down here, by the way. I love it. So yeah, I'm not really seeing any issues with these capacitors. Nothing's bulging or leaking that I can tell. Got some that are kind of shoehorned in there, but... Uh, there's our record switch linkage right here. We're going to have to clean that as well, as well as all the pots and uh, whatnot. But uh, yeah, lots to do on this unit. So uh, how about I just go ahead and tear into the capacitors and uh, I'll show you how things end up. But uh, before I do that real quick, here's the stuff I'm going to be using to, to test things got the usual ESR meter there and in order to uh, match up capacitor pairs I'm going to use these two meters. This is my old multimeter that I got back when I was first getting into electronics and I picked this one because it's got LCR functionality built into it. You can you can even check transistors with this bad boy so yeah I, I use this a lot to to match capacitors especially when it came to a uh, reviewing power supplies, and I had to find matched capacitors for the load testers. But, uh, yeah, in case that one doesn't work out, I've got this, this little doohickey as well, so. Shouldn't be a problem doing this, but, uh, yeah. Let me get started, and I'll see you later. All right, just a little bit of an end of day one update for you. Before I continue on with this, Yes, it really is taking that long. Those are the capacitors I've changed so far. Well, those are the good ones. And uh, yeah, it's taking for friggin' ever. I got the motorboard done here. I did not have these two capacitors. These are 
supposed to be 25 volts according to the schematics, but I measured them and uh, one's running at 8 volts and the other one's running at 5 volts. So I did have 16 volt capacitors that uh, I swapped in there and it's working fine. So yeah, apparently I missed those in the order, but uh, whatever, it is what it is. Okay, so it's about the middle of day two in the recap job and I've finally gotten the recap job done. Let me just show you the, the pile of caps I got out from this little adventure. This is what I got out of, out of it on day two. Now, how many of these are bad, you're probably wondering. Well, if you're into electronics like I am, you'll probably already guess the answer, but the answer is zero. Not one of these is bad. In fact, not a single one in the entire unit was bad. So I basically threw 50 bucks worth of caps at this for, well, not nothing because it's got Nichicon Muse in it now, but uh, yeah, this is why you don't blanket recap tape decks like this. It's because more often than not, you're throwing a bunch of money away for no discernible benefit. But uh, yeah, in terms of which ones measured the worst, it was these orange ones here. They're all running at about 9 ohms or something like that. But uh, in terms of what these kinds of capacitors are, that's actually well in spec, so I'm not worried about it at all. I got two more non-polarized ones out of it. And those have gone in with the, the fancy green Nichicon Muse ones. But uh, yeah, every single capacitor has been changed now. You're probably wondering what it looks like on the inside. And I'm just going to show you real quick here. Because these are some pretty, pretty caps. Okay, here we go. Here's the Dolby area right here. You can see a bunch of gold Nichicon Muse there. There's some light blue ones too. Those are also Muse. Same thing here. Got the light blues and we've got the the fancy pretty green ones that I like best. I kind of got that one soldered in a little crooked, but whatever. It won't matter. Got a bunch of gold ones back in there. Got a couple of Panasonic EB general purpose here because that's what that purpose calls for or what that location calls for. The microphone amp is up in this area, and that's got all Nichicon Muse now in it. And uh, yeah, should be good to go now. And you can just see, just look at that right there. You can see just how much more efficient things have gotten in the years since this tape deck was built. If you remember before, all these capacitors were just crammed right in there with hardly any space to to uh, fit anything between them. And uh, now they're nice and skinny and everything fits just perfect. And uh, yeah, that's just the way it is. Capacitors have changed after all this time. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna plug it in and turn it on and see if everything still works before we get to the transport service which is going to be another long haul, and I'm kind of tempted to make it a day three to do that. But for now, I just want to see if it turns on without releasing magic smoke. And yes, even this board has been recapped. It's got all Nichicon Muse in it now. Just because I didn't want to waste time and money picking out different quality of parts for, for every single thing. All of the capacitors in the motor in the meter board are replicated somewhere else on the main board, so I'm not worried about it. Let's see what happens. And it's fired up. We're not gonna know whether or not it actually records and plays properly until later in the video when we do the uh, record and play test, but uh, I will tell you right now, all of these controls have been cleaned. And, uh, yeah, we might have a little bit of an issue on the motor control board yet. Because as you can see here, this is the adjustment plot for motor speed, and it is incredibly corroded. I would like to replace that, but I don't have one. 
So I'm going to try to align it as best I can. And uh, yeah, this might be part of my next DigiKey order. I might do that. But uh, yeah, it is time to get into the transport on this thing now. So let me just unplug it. Since we know all the new capacitors are in there and happy. And we'll get started with the disassembly procedures on the uh, transport. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have to shut you off real quick so I can take pictures of these wires so I know where they go after. All right, so I got the head wires disconnected and theoretically the transport is ready to come out now. But uh, well, except for the fact I got to get the screws out first. But before we do that, we have to get this arm to free up so that we can actually get the transport out. And to do that, there's a big spring back in there. Don't know if you can see it. It's just right down there. So we're gonna have to get that out. If we can. Well, that wasn't hard at all. So, theoretically that should be ready to come out now but yeah now that all those capacitors have been changed it's very possible that this machine is going to need a full alignment now so that's basically what the record and play test at the end of the video is going to be on this one just to see how well it's doing after the capacitors have been changed so can we get this out now I did go ahead and remove the door up front, so yeah, it looks like this one comes out real easy. And I should mention that the uh, capstan motor on this is FG servo. It's just not using the BSL servo motor drive. But, uh, the TCK 61 and 55 use. So here's our transport right now. Ready to go, ready for us to work on it. And work on it we shall. There is a lot to do on this one. Because I want this one to be real nice. So let me see here, what do I gotta do first? I'm thinking I just remove these screws on the side here. At least the plastic part will come away. So yeah, with this being an FG servo setup, it should be half decent for speed stability once we're done with this. But I don't know, we'll see. We don't need to fully remove every bit of the eject mechanism. We just need to get enough space to work in there. Because I'm not even sure how the real drive works on this machine. Okay, so that came away just fine there. And I'm dropping these little cassette guides. Or whatever the heck you call them. I'll have to put those back in the right spots. And I'm going to do that right now so I don't forget... There we go, just like that. Now I'll put that up out of the way, along with the screws. But yeah, if y'all are thinking I'm going to recap that big TAC V900X fully, you are very much mistaken. I might throw a few Nichicon Muse caps in it, but it's certainly not getting the full treatment like this unit had. All right. Getting a look at the mechanism now. I could really use better lighting, I'll tell you what. Heads are very dirty, but in good shape, which I would expect considering it's my grandparents' tape deck. Counter belt is 
little bit on the loose side. I'll go ahead and replace that too, even though I don't know that I really need to. <clears throat> Now the question is what to do with these piano keys up front here. I'm not even sure how they come off. Uh, back tension brake has a little bit of gunk on the felt. It's not too bad. I would really like to relieve the head block even though it's really not that bad. Please don't tell me that's a rubber idler around the take-up reel. I think it is, and I think it's hard, and I don't have a replacement for that. It is hard, and it's badly cracked. I honestly don't know what I can do about that. If I so much as even try to take that thing off, it's going to disintegrate. And I can't run a new belt around the edge, because, well, there's really not enough space for that. I wonder if I can get a new idler. I can try the rubber renew idea. Possibly. Yeah, that's probably about the only way I can see doing this. Because that is really not good. Yeah, that's going to have to be rubber renewed. Oh boy, that's going to be fun. All of this is going to be fun. Okay, so I've printed out the destructions from the service manual, so we're going to try and figure out how to do this. Now, from what I can tell, all of this is just clipped in. But we have to get this spring off the bottom first. Then there's another spring right down in there. We got a release for the pause button. And over on the side here, we've got this little screw right there that joins the uh, the door mechanism together. And yeah, we've got to deal with these uh, two door arm thingamajiggers here that we have to keep track of. So yeah, I'm going to try and do all this and we'll see if it goes flying apart. Probably will. Now we can disengage this damper mechanism right here. And let's see, this pops out the top and then pulls out and it goes underneath of a little roller in there. I don't know if you can see it too well. That's how it goes in and then it hooks around that little black plastic piece right there. It's really complicated. It's annoying. But yeah, that's loose now and I can get this other arm out. It's basically in there the same way except this is the other end here. It just sort of has this catch on the end so it's not really that picky of an arm but uh, yeah we got to get it out from up here and then we got to pull it through like so and yeah just keep track of where all this stuff goes because well good luck with that but it is what it is okay from here now we got to get these spring or this whole spring assembly off. And to do that, it seems, we have to disengage it from each side. There's one side there, and there's this other one, if I can show you, up here. But yeah, that's all loose now. I don't know how it comes out. But it needs to come out. Otherwise, we can't exactly get the piano keys out. Well, I kind of see how this comes out now. You just sort of push down and pull it out. 
So the spring we're after is this one down in here. This black one. That is for the pause. Control. So yeah, this is the mechanism without the piano keys on. There's going to be a lot to relube here. And yeah, I'm just glad I got the destructions printed out because we're probably going to have to reference that several times in the course of working on this. It's moving okay, not too bad, the head block. But I do want to pull this off to relube everything, and I do mean everything. So, I Sony Stereo, Listen 5. Okay, folks, so you just saw me service the pinch roller, which was really, quite badly gummed up. And uh, I'm just trying to figure out just how to get this head block off, and I'm not really finding any decent way to do it. There's this little spring clip down here that engages into these two tabs right down there. And then it's hooked into this little piece up here, this plastic piece, and I cannot figure out just how to get this to free up. All right, guys, I figured out how to do this. Basically, you just push down on this thing and then push it that way, and it comes out. So I'm just going to try to extract it here, and there's a little ball bearing we need to keep track of in there. And uh, it, it actually came out with the little assembly there, so... Yeah, we can't lose that, so I don't know how I'm going to reinstall that later, but it's going to be fun, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, I got the head block released now, so it should come off. And we've got one spring to deal with, too. Let's see if I can figure out how to get at it. I don't know if it's easier to pull it off from the... Plastic or from the metal? I think we'll do it from the metal. If I can get my fat fingers in there to do it. Okay, it's off. It was actually glued on. Thank you, Sony. Appreciate that. 
So let's see here. Can I get this spring out so it doesn't interfere with my operations? Probably not, because that would be too easy. But uh, yeah, the head block is just off now. So we can sort of set that aside and concentrate our efforts down here. Does this plate move at all independently? I'm not sure that it does. Kind of seems like it should. Yes, it actually should. It's really badly gummed up. So this needed to be done. Now, what do I need to do to separate these two plates? Oh yeah, you can just feel this grease has all turned to glue. This really needed to be done. So I'm going to have to probably take this big black spring out now. So we're going to do that real quick. Hopefully we're not messing up the azimuth. But there's really not much choice when it comes to how badly this is gummed up. So, yeah, I'm just going to clean this up with a paper towel. And we'll go in with all new Molly Coat. Because uh, it's my grandparents' tape deck. We're using that good stuff on my grandparents' tape deck. ソニー、サウンドセンサー 2。Okay, so before I continue on with greasing this whole head block assembly, I just wanted to point out that uh, the place where that ball bearing goes is in a little slot that's just right down in there. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, that's where that goes. Anyhow, let me see here. Oh, we've got a couple more ball bearings to talk about. Just give me a second here. I'm dealing with this little black spring that goes with this uh, whole assembly. Okay, the other ball bearings are just right there. There's one there, one there, and one there. We're going to clean all those up too. Because, uh, yeah, it needs to be nice and slippy slidey up in there. So I'm going to go wide angle like this and we'll start doing some greasing and stuff.
Okay, so I think I got the piano keys back on. They fought me. Of course they did. But it really wasn't all that bad. I just had the issue of the eject getting hung up for some reason and it took a while for that to work loose. But yeah, somehow I got to get these springs back on and we can be done with the front of the unit. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the tape counter. I'm just going to leave it flopping around loose like this for a while. Now, when you do this service on one of these, remember there's a set of uh, pickups in there. This is what tells the deck whether or not it's actually working or not. So you absolutely need the counter belt to be in place for those contacts to, to you know, make contact and tell the deck that it's actually playing a tape. So, yeah, I'm going to have to get in there and clean those contacts at some point, but I'll do that later. For now, i got to get these springs on so we can get started on the rest of the unit. Fun, fun, fun. So let me get this spring back on and then we'll pick up with the, the back end of this unit. And won't that be fun? All right, so it's time to work on the back side of this transport. Now you'll notice I've already got the motor plate off and flipped over. This is because I decided to step back a little bit, take a couple days off and start soaking the uh, the idler around the take-up reel in uh, rubber renew already and it's a good thing I did too because it needed multiple applications to bring it back around but uh, I think we're actually going to get to hear this play in this video and record and whatnot so yeah it's not a permanent solution because rubber renew is never permanent but uh, it'll do for now so yeah we're gonna have to talk about that either in a little bit more detail as time goes by but first we got to get this plate off and get everything up underneath there lubed up and stuff so yeah still lots to do so let's get started <laughs>
Okay, so I think I got everything finished up on this part of the transport. At least I hope I do. Now we're going to get into this idler again. I'm going to have to try and measure for a new idler tire, but uh, yeah, I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to do the rubber renew stuff on camera. I've already done like six or seven applications on the top side of this, but I'm going to go in from the uh, bottom side here as well. But uh, I just wanted to show you real quick. If you see these little spring tabs here, that's how you set the take-up tension on this deck. I don't know if you can see it too well, but there are actually three different uh, height settings you can set those spring tabs to, and that varies the take-up tension on that. So yeah, when you buy a replacement idler assembly from uh, Sony, or at least when you did back in the day, you got this whole thingamadoodle here. You didn't get the tire by itself, so uh, yeah, there never was a source to get a tire for these things, so I'm just going to have to try and hit the plumbing stores and see if I can find an O-ring that'll work. I do have another O-ring here. This one's the right diameter out externally, but uh, it's a three millimeter thick O-ring, and this is not going to work. I guarantee you that. It might go on, but it would bind up. So I'm just going to have to try and measure and we'll try and figure out exactly what this thing needs for for a new uh, rubber tire. But uh, yeah, for now, I think it's going to work. But uh, yeah, like I said, we're going to do rubber renew on camera for you, just so I can show you exactly how I do this. I don't want to leave that uncapped for long because it's got a real strong smell to it that you don't want to breathe in. So I'm going to set this up like this. Hopefully you can see. I'll bring you in nice and close like. And I'm just going to moisten a Q-tip with this stuff. And I'm going to try and dab it on so that it gets in between the uh, tire and the hub assembly. And you're probably thinking to yourself, gee, I hope that stuff is plastic safe. And well, it's not recommended. But uh, we really don't have a choice. If I even so much as try to get that idler off, it's going to not be a good day for us. We will not be able to hear this play because it'll snap and yeah, it's just not going to work. So when you apply Rubber Renew, you put it on and you just let it air dry. That's basically all there is to it. So that'll be the last time I do this Rubber Renew on this machine because I think it's got enough on there to work now. I'm not going to bother taking these reel tables off just now. They're moving well enough. They could use lubing, but uh, if I'm just going to have to go in and find a, a tire anyway, I'm going to have to get into this again anyway, and yeah. So I'm going to shut you off. I'm going to try and do some measurements and see if I can figure out exactly what kind of idler, idler tire I need for this thing, and then I'll be back.
Okay, so I think I'm slowly getting this stuff put back together. I didn't really show it on camera, but this really long spring here, it appears to fit over a pin in this little white arm here. So yeah, make sure that's in place when you put this back together. But uh, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. You do kind of have to get under there and lift the brakes out of the way in order to get this to fit back down properly, but I think we're good now. So, getting real close to getting this back together. I would have liked to have gotten inside this assembly and lubed a bunch of stuff up in there, but it seems like everything is lubed properly, and uh, to be honest, it looks like a bunch of this stuff does not come apart at all. So, I'm prepared to leave well enough alone on that. I'll do some more lubrication here, obviously, and I've got a washer here. I don't know where that goes. I'll have to figure that out yet. But uh, yeah, we're slowly getting this back together. So I'm going to continue on here. All right, guys, I figured out where that washer goes. It's supposed to go on the very end of this shaft down in here. Yeah, I missed something when I serviced that assembly. So I get to take that back out again, but should be no problem obviously easier to do without this plate in place but uh, whatever it is what it is you got to do what you got to do all right we're gonna move on to cleaning the capstan bearing now finally and I'm gonna do this the same way I do it for every other deck I'm going to use acetone on a cotton pipe cleaner and we're just gonna go right through it there is no oil keeper on either side to worry about so yeah, no issues there. All right, standard acetone procedure. Takes place right now. Don't get it anywhere near plastic. I'm just gonna go like this. Run it through like that. Watch it get hung up. Oh, there it goes. It's hitting on the... Uh, door mechanism but that's fine I got it now we gotta let that dry off a little bit and while we're doing that we're gonna clean the flywheel real good I don't see any nasty grody belt residue on the pulley itself so that's gonna be it for the acetone on this one I did have to use the acetone on the little drive shaft that drives the idler, but uh, yeah, kind of did that one off camera as well. You'll have to forgive me on that one. All right, isopropyl alcohol. Make our cap stand nice and clean. Now it's important to remember on this particular machine, there is a clutch on the cap stand flywheel that we need to watch out for. I'll show it to you in a second here. Just had to get down in there and get rid of all that old grease. Anyhow, this here's the clutch. So you don't want to get any oil down in there. No grease either, obviously. So yeah, that's got to dry off. But before we go any further, I want to reattach this arm here. For the eject mechanism because that had to come off in order to get the plate off. Now we need that big spring which is right here and I'm just gonna pinch the spring closed on the end just like it was. As for this one 
I've just placed it here temporarily. This engages with the uh, little metal record arm thingamadoodle on the other side of the mechanism. So I just put it there for now just, just so I didn't lose it or nothing. So I think we're getting closer here. I've got all five screws in for that plate. I've got one screw here. I'm not sure what it's from. Ain't that always nice. Anyhow, I think we're about ready to get belts on. I'm going to figure out where that screw goes in a second, but uh, where did I put my belts here? Okay, here they are. 10.1 is the right internal circumference, 10.1 inches. And this is basically all I have. It's not what I would like to use. It's like three millimeters wide. I do have a deck tech belt that might actually work, but it's on the really, it's kind of on the tight side, so I would rather not use it. For the deck tech belts, you need 82 millimeter diameter for this machine, and I don't have any. I'll probably order one or two when I'm trying to figure out exactly what to get for idlers on this thing. But uh, yeah, the other belt, the Shaw belt, the one that goes around here, that is a, an 8.0. So, yeah, I've got one right there. I've got it from my 1.2 millimeter wide stash. And basically, that belt is responsible for the real drive on this machine through this pulley right here. So, yeah, it absolutely needs to be there. And I just noticed I got to clean that off. So, yeah, it's about time to put belts back on and uh, put it back together and See if it works, but I gotta figure out where the screw goes, so bear with me here. All right, guys, I figured out where that screw went. I had to take this whole assembly back apart and get back in there and put that screw where it was supposed to be, and I still haven't put this gear back on. But, uh, yeah, I figured it out. So I only hope I got this spring where it's supposed to be because I'm not entirely sure I was right about that but uh, I'm sure we'll be finding out the hard way anyway regardless anyhow you've seen me lube the capstan bearings of other decks before so I'm not going to waste your time with that on camera I'm just going to put the rest of this back together and we'll see what we got how about that all right, I think I got this back together enough so I can show you exactly how this back plate goes on. First thing you got to be aware of is this little soft close mechanism clips onto there. And there's a obviously a solenoid here for the auto stop. And that just fits into a hole right there. This little pinhole will want to fall out as soon as you take this assembly off, but that's fine. It's easy enough to put back on, but uh, yeah, I think I got this back on the way it's supposed to be. Finally got my shutoff belt on properly and using the right belt, and uh, the new capstan belt is riding exactly where it should, so yeah, until I get a 5 millimeter belt, that's going to be the best I can do. I'm not really thrilled about the, uh, the lube job on the capstan, really, but... Uh, it might do the job. Remember, back in in the day when I did my uh, Wow and Flutter video, this machine was running at 0.35%, so I would be surprised if it's anywhere near that high now. So, yeah, clearly there's more work to do on this machine yet, because I've got to figure out an, an idler situation for it. But, uh, yeah, for now we're just trying to get it to play for the first time in years, so... That's the only goal I have today. So we're going to go around to the front again, and we're going to try and find a, uh, a counter belt. I decided to reattach it, as you can see, just until I got the, the backside of the transport done. But it's done now, so we can finally move on to fixing this. All right. We should effectively be done with this now, except for putting the door back on. And I see no reason to burden you guys with watching me do that yet, too, so... 
I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put this door back on, I'm going to put this back in the machine, and hopefully we're going to get something that works now. As for speed calibration and wow and flutter stuff, I'm going to report what it is, but I don't think I'll do that on camera this time. This has been a lot of work. So, yeah, I'll show the... We're, we're going to test it out on camera, but I just won't show the speed test. All right, let me get this back together, and then we'll see what we have. All right, folks, it wasn't the most fun I've ever had, but I got it back together. So it's time to see exactly how well it's working, if it's working at all. I'm leaving the front door off for now, because I just want to see if everything works right. So I've got it running through the home theater right now. So let's power up and see what we got. Rather, let's plug it in first. Plugging things in is always a good way to, to get something working. Huh, did I lose my lamp in there? I may have. Oh, wait a minute. It would be good to plug the motor in. I believe the lamp drive comes off this too. Possibly. All right. Now let's see what we got. Ah, uh, still no lamp over here. That's fine, I've got extra lamps. As we can see, motor drive is working. Let's see if we can get it, the transport to do anything. And not a lot of take up torque, but. It's actually getting better as it goes along. It's not shutting off though. Let's see if we can get some audio out of her. Yes, we can. Let's see if autoplay works. Oh, it actually, it actually did. I just had my hands on it. Let's try that again. Oh yeah, there it goes. It's a little slow, but... Auto stop is working. Apparently. Let me get my... Demo tape. It's going to bother me if that lamp's not working for the record test. I think this one is working. Maybe. I don't know. Lights are too bright. Let me shut this one off here. I just can't tell. I might replace this lamp before we do the record and play test, but yeah, we'll see. All right, let's set up for Chrome BIOS. It sounds phenomenal. I'll give you, I'll gotta, I gotta say that right now. It sounds phenomenal. I don't know.
know how much of this is the new capacitors or not. But I am very happy. Transport seems to be working. Electronics are working. All right. I'm going to shut you off now. I'm going to get the speed calibration dialed in. I'm going to put up on screen right now exactly what I got for a post repair while in flutter. And then we're going to do a record and play test. Because we got to get to this before the uh, rubber renew dries out in that idler tire. On that first day from Christmas, my missus gave for me a big bowl of sour cream. On that second day from Christmas, my missus gave for me two pair of hair and a bowl of sour cream for me. On that third day from Christmas, my missus gave for me three rubber boots, two pair of hair and a bowl of sour cream for me. On that fourth day from Christmas, my missus gave for me four hole of tea, three rubber boots, two pair of hair and a bowl of sour cream for me. On that five day from Christmas, my missus gave for me five golden rings of kubasa. Beautiful, beautiful. Four hole of tea, three rubber boots, two pair of hair and a bowl of sour cream for me. On the sixth day from Christmas, my missus gave for me six overalls, five golden rings of kubasa. Four hole of tea, three rubber boots, two pair of hair, and a bowl of sour cream for me. On that seven day from Christmas, my missus gave for me seven four by two slabs, that's lumber, seven four by two slabs, two year old could make a chicken coop to keep the ducks in. Seven four by two slabs, six overalls, five golden rings of kubas. <laughs> four hole of tea, three rubber boots, two pair of hair, and a bowl of sour cream for me. On the ninth day from Christmas, my missus gave for me nine months pregnant, eight all my supper, seven four by two slab, six overalls, five golden rings of kubas. <laughs> ah, beautiful. Four hole of tea, three rubber boots, two pair of hair, and a bowl of sour cream for me. On the tenth day from Christmas, my missus gave for me. Ten pounds, just snack, just snack, just snack, that's garlic, you know, garlic, garlic, garlic. Ten pounds, just snack, nine months pregnant, eight all my supper, seven, four by two, slap six overalls, five golden rings of kubasa. Four hole of tea, three rubber boots, two pair of hair, and a bowl of sour cream for me. On the allowing day from Christmas, Chikai Chikai boys in the band, it's going to be a big ending here. Oh yeah, oh yeah. On the allowing day from Christmas, my missus gave for me allowing pills of borscht, 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 ten punch of snack, nine months pregnant, eight. My supper seven four by two slap six of our out five golden rings of Kubas. <laughs> four hole of tea, three rubber boots, two pair of hair, and a bowl of sour cream for me. Beautiful, beautiful. Smile.
Quite a new 